Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile video. I'm Richard, and before we get into the deck profile, I want to quickly talk about our sponsor, which is Titan Shield. Titan Shield is a company that offers protection for your collectibles, including trading cards. They have standard sleeves, Japanese size sleeves, so they got something for everyone. Vanguard, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, Pokemon. I think it's especially cool they offer these sleeves in 150 packs, which makes it a lot easier to sleeve your Vanguard decks, which only come up to 50 cards per deck. So if you want to sleeve your main deck with one color, you can sleeve up to three different decks which is really helpful. They sell for a pretty decent price. Only $10 for a pack of sleeves is actually pretty decent, especially since you're getting 150 of them. And I'll be showing off what the sleeves look like in today's deck profile as well. So if you guys want to see how they feel and get my personal preference on what I think about their sleeves. So here's one of the examples that they uh, shipped to me. These are some red Japanese sleeves. So it comes with 150 of them. And these are some standard size clear sleeves. So these are technically sized for magic cards, Pokemon cards, but you can actually put them over um, small size Japanese size character sleeves. So you can use them as over sleeves to protect your cards. So I think that's really helpful as well. Get 150 of those so you can sleeve up to three decks if you got nice expensive character sleeves on them. Two of my first impressions of the sleeves, uh, we'll start with the Japanese side sleeves, is that you can already see the red Vanguard logo peeking through the back. The sleeve fits pretty well overall. The only issue I would say is just the fact that it is a little bit see-through, so that can be maybe somewhat concerning in a tournament setting. But if you don't mind seeing the little Vanguard logo in the back, it works perfectly well as a Japanese side sleeve. Also, if you do have an issue with the back, there's nothing wrong with just throwing on like a white Dragon Shield or Ultra Pro sleeve on top. This is Dragon Shield, if anyone's wondering. Can't see the mark or anything going on in back there. And it fits in really well. The lip around the white is showing pretty nicely. So it makes a really good inner sleeve for colors. And the fact that you're getting 150 sleeves for 10 bucks, it's not a bad deal. For the standard size sleeves, I got some clear ones. Uh, these are clear Titan Shield sleeves. You can see that it fits pretty well. The only issue is I would say is that the lip at the bottom stops right at the bottom of where the card is. And that can be a little bit of an issue when you're picking up the card or drawing the card. You can get loose a little easier. An example I have here is a Dragon Shield sleeve, a clear one. You can see there's a little bit more lip on the bottom and this one it just cuts off right there. I will say that if you're playing it just as a normal standard size card sleeve, I have a buddy fight sleeve here, a clear one. It has a decent amount of lip room at the top. You don't really have to worry too much about that. So if you're using these sleeves as just regular standard size magic Pokemon card sleeves, it works great. But I don't think they would make very good over sleeves. Or Vanguard, unfortunately. I think that if you're going over quantity over quality, $10 for 150 colored sleeves or even 150 of the standard size sleeves, I think it can be a pretty decent deal if you kind of want to go find a way to sleeve a bunch of cards really easily, especially if you're going to be playing something like Commander format, where you're going to need 100 cards plus sleeves for your tokens, etc. Thank you again to Titan Shield for being the sponsor for today's video. And without further ado, let's jump into the deck profile. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start with our starter, which is Crimson Lion Cub Kerf. We are playing an Ezel deck, so we're going to want an Ezel starter. So you need Kerf and the soul for Blonde Ezel skill to go off. So you kind of need to run Kerf as your starter. Next up for grade threes, four copies of Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel, the V series one. So Blonde Ezel's first skill is act. Um, when it's in your hand, if you have Bowman and Gareth on the board, you Soul Blast Kirf, and then you ride Ezel from your hand. And if your opponent's uh, Vanguard's at grade two or less, it loses a drive check. And then the other skill is when it attacks, uh, you can call a card from your hand. So that's actually pretty important because you can call cards, excuse me, like Sagramore or Aglavale to kind of extend the number of attacks you're gonna make during the turn you first ride this if you can't stride yet. But obviously the whole point is that with the new stride rulings, you want to ride to grade three first so that when it comes back to your turn, you're already on a grade three. And then all you have to do is just stride. So Blonde Ezel Turbo. Next up is really important card for the deck and one of my favorite cards in this whole game, Bluish Flame Liberator Percival. So Percival's skill is uh, basically replacing, whoop, move it over there, replacing uh, Wonder Ezel in terms of Excel marker generation. So Percival's first skill is 
Vanguard Circle only continuous. All your units on additional markers or Excel markers get 5k. And the second skill is when it's placed on van or rear, you, if your Vanguard's grade 3 or greater, you count a plus 1, discard a card from your hand, and you get a second or you get an additional Excel marker. So if you're an Excel 2, you get Excel 2, you draw a card. Then you search your deck or drop zone for Oath, Liberator, Aglavale, and call it to rear and shuffle your deck. And you can only use the ability of this card once per turn. So you can't, you know, Percival, 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 back to back. That'd be pretty broken. But um, still a really good card. Obviously, the whole goal is to get to Blonde Ezel ASAP, then go into Percival right afterwards. So that way you can get more Excel markers and then kind of turb out your field that way. Next up for grade threes, uh, still underrated grade three. I think this deck, this card should definitely be run in grade at full play sets in premium decks. Uh, Battlefield Storm Sagamore. So Sagamore skills when it's placed from your hand, you soul plus one, you draw a card, and you call a card from your hand to regard circle. So it's a plus one in terms of you draw a card and then call something, so you gain hand. Um, for a soul blast, which is really easy to gain soul thanks to Aglavale. Um, and also other cards in the deck that soul charge. And the fact that you can use this when you ride it too makes it a good ride target if um, you need to go into Ultima and you have two Sagramores in your hand. You can just ride Sagramore, get your Excel marker, draw a card, use its skill before you stride, soul blast, draw a card, call something to start filling your board, then discard the other Sagramore for Ultima cost, use Ultima to call two more things and set up for your kill turn. So I think Sagamore is a really good rear guard, especially with Brambrant Dragon for the G unit, since it it's uh, calling cards from your hand, so getting more attacks that way. Also procs off the effects of Dindrain, which is also really helpful. So overall, really good card. And it's a grade three, you know, stride fodder. So that was it for grade threes. So not too many of those, just 12. Uh, next up, MVP of the deck, which is Knight of Superior Skills Bowman. Bowman's skill is uh, Vanner Rear when it's placed from uh, from your hand. Uh, you discard a card from your hand, search your deck for Gareth, call it. That's it. So you want to ride Bowman, you discard a card, you search out Gareth, and then if you have Blonde Ezel in hand, you just do the superior ride. So the goal of the deck is to have Bowman and Ezel in hand. Everything else doesn't really matter. That's how you get the deck rolling. Um, what are the odds of getting Bowman and Ezel in hand? Pretty high. <laughs> After the year I've been playing this deck, it's it's still really consistent. So you definitely want to run for Bowman. Next up for grade twos, three copies of Oath Liberator Aglaville. Only running three instead of the full playset, just because um, you can search it from the drop zone, so it's not that big a deal. So Aglaville's skill is Vanguard Circle when it's placed. You kind of lost one. Look at the top three. Call one from among them, the rest go to bottom. So kind of an homage to the original Aglaville that was when it's called on rear, kind of does the same thing. The second skill is rear guard circle. When it attacks, you choose a rear guard, you put it into your soul, and Aglaville gains 10k. At the end of the battle that it attacks, you bounce it back to your hand. So that's a good early combo. You go into Percival, Percival searches out Aglaville, you attack with Percival, attack with Aglaville, Aglaville goes back to your hand, you attack a Blondezel, you call out, Aglavale with Ezel's skill to call from hand. So you can kind of get a lot of attacks that way. So pretty good combo there. And also just gaining 10k for giving yourself more soul. Really, really good card in general. Uh, but you only need three just because, my personal opinion, you, you want to see Bowman as your grade two target. So running too many grade twos can create a problem in that regard. But overall, Aglavale is just a really, really good beat stick card. Next up. Uh, last week, we got my one of tech, uh, Providential Angel. So Providential Angel is really good because uh, it combos with Ultima. That's the only reason the card is being run in the deck. Uh, you search it out with Ultima, and its skill is act. If your hand is one or less, you cannot blast one. This gets 10k, and for the rest of the turn, your opponent can only call Sentinels once. So for the whole turn, they can only call one Sentinel. So the idea is that when you go in Ultima and you stack those crits on the top of your deck, your opponent's going to only be able to PG Ultima, and that's it. So you, so it makes it easier to guarantee your kill. Your opponent has to kind of G-guard their way out of all those attacks. And if you have a bunch of Excel markers and a bunch of units attacking with three crits on them, it kind of helps you finish off the game. But obviously, you don't need it, but it's a good search target to kind of just help guarantee that you get the turn. So why not, you know? Why not just have a guaranteed Ultima kill? So that's it for grade twos. Not too many of those. 
We got the one copy of Gareth, which gets searched out by uh, Bowman. Uh, its skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you counter blast, and this gets 10k. We're never really using it for that. We're just running it literally for the name, and it's got the 10k shield value, so it's the better Gareth than the vanilla. Um, only running it at one because I'm I just play the game risky like that. Obviously, maybe in a more competitive setting, and if I feel less confident in my ability to pull out the one Gareth, maybe I'll run it at two. You know, um, I never really find myself needing to use Bowman's skill more than the turn I write it. Um, I feel like it's not really worth it, even if it is pulling a card out of the deck, just losing a card in my hand in premium just for an extra card on the board. I don't know. doesn't seem that worth, in my opinion, especially when I can run other grade ones in the deck that just don't kind of sit and do nothing if I draw into it. So yeah, just the one Gareth, you know? Next up. Whoa. Cards are falling. We're running a playset. Of uh, Dawning Knight Gorbaduck. So Gorbaduck's skill is. There we go. Uh, the top skill is continuous. Um, during your turn, if you call two or more things, it gets 5k. The other skill is Van or Rear. Um, when it's placed from your hand, you look at the top five, look for a grade three, add it to your hand. If you added a card, you discard a card from your hand. So every clan got one of these. Uh, it's still really good because you can do it on ride. We have 12 grade threes in our deck, so we got a pretty consistent amount of targets. Um, I love this card just because in premium, obviously, you ride it. If you're missing Blondezel, you look at top five, boom, you got your Blondezel. If you're looking for Percival just to get those Excel markers early, you can look at look for that. And Sagamore is just a really good card. So all the grade threes are great targets, and it's just deck thinning if you just end up discarding the card that you searched anyway. So Gorbaduck, really good card. Geared wanted to be the right target for sure. Next up, uh, we're running four copies of Dindrain. So Listener of Truth Dindrain's skill is um, auto when it's placed by a card ability. You Soul Blast one and you can either draw or counter charge. And if you counter charge, it gets 3k. So good counter charge fodder. It's mostly there for the drawing, I would say. And also if I use it early game with the Ezel skill or Sagramore skill, or even calling it out from the deck with uh, Spear Cross or um, calling it out with Brambit Dragon. It's just a good target overall. The fact that it can be chained off by multiple different ways of calling it out. So it's, I think it's a really good card. Resource Engine. In drain, good card. So next up, we got a few uh, new, not new guys, but we got some uh, little techies in that are a little different from the list that I've been running previously. Uh, Crimson Lion Beast Howl. When it's placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard with Ezel, you counter charge and soul charge. So, counter charge engine, pretty simple. Feed soul for Sagamore and Dindrain. Um, only thing I don't like is that it has a 5k shield, but we can deal with it. We're only running two copies. And plus, once we ride to Blonde Ezel, we're pretty much not going to be re riding different grade threes. So, we're going to sit on Ezel for pretty much the rest of the game. So, I feel like this does work. If you're going to keep on going through the game and um, searching it out with Spear Cross and Brambin and all those things, it's a good good uh, resource engine card right there. Two copies of a new card. This card came out in DBTO2. It's a Keter Sanctuary card, so we're running it. Uh, it's Additional Angel. So Additional Angel's skill is you uh, Soul Blast 1 and you put this card into your damage zone, and then you choose a face-up grade 3 and you call it. So this is clearly just obviously going to be your Percival searcher. Since Percival doesn't say that it needs to be searched um, or placed through hand or from deck, it's just when placed. If you find yourself with a Percival in your damage zone, you can call out Additional Angel, Soul Blast, put in your damage zone, call out Percival, and then you can use Percival's effect to get you an Excel marker. So that's mostly what it's there for. I find myself using it as discard fodder for the most part. The other reason I do like this card is if your opponent keeps you at one damage during the turn that you would ride to Ezel and then stride into Spear Cross through its skill, if you only have one damage and you can't kind of blast two, you can use Additional Angel's skill um, to Soul Blast one, put itself in the damage zone, and then let's say this is not a grade three, you could keep another face-up card, put it there. You don't have a grade three to call, it just stays there, but now you have two damage, so you can kind of blast two, and then you go into Spear Axe, so... 
it still helps. It's a good little tech, but overall, um, through testing, very rarely have I gotten the effect off. But it doesn't hurt. It's there. So might as well run it for those uh those little moments, you know? So now we're going into the fun stuff, which is the triggers. So we're gonna start with uh four copies of Halo Shield Mark. Mark's uh just your draw PG, you know. It's a draw and it's a PG. It's two good things in one. So it's also, its skill is when it's placed on guard circles, so it works with Slamy Flare. Really good card. Use and draw PGs for our deck. We are playing premium, so we're going to be running the uh, premium collection criticals. So this one is the one that's the Stride Fodder. Uh, what is it called? Gold Garnish Lion. Uh, it's When it's in your hand, if you pay the cost of Stride, it becomes a grade 3, so it's Stride Fodder. So now we don't have to run the grade 1 Stride Fodders. We have triggers that do it. So that's obviously very helpful. And then I'm running four copies of the uh, player of the Holy Cord, um, Theodora. This one is like the Heart Thumb clone where it's a uh, grade uh, GB1, not grade one. When your Vanguard attacks, you move it into your soul. You choose your Vanguard, it gets 10K and you draw a card for that battle. Still a good card. Um, we can't run um, over triggers just because we're running Ultima. So uh, before I was running the one over trigger and three Theodora, but yeah, crits, crits win games, you know? And lastly, for the last four cards of our deck, we have four heals, but I am doing four Elixir Sommelier and uh, one Shaggy Rabbit. Uh, Shaggy Rabbit has a skill. It's a 5k trigger from uh, GBT 13, I believe. Is that right? Yep, I was right. Memory, memory did me good. So Shaggy Rabbit's skill is when it's discarded for the cost of a G-Guardian, you can bind two heal triggers face up, and then you can either counter charge or soul charge. So depending on what you need for that turn, uh, if you need a counter charge for like Elise of the G-Guard skill, if you need counter charge for next turn, if your opponent's trying to counter blast deny you, you need a counter charge to go into your Ultima, you have Shaggy Rabbit to boop, get you get your face up damage, and your opponent can't really do anything about it in that case. Uh, it is a 5k trigger with 10k shield, so when you do drive check or damage check it, it does mitigate the amount of power or shield you're going to get. But as a one of, and you draw into it, pretty pretty good, I would say. So then, well now we're getting into the really fun stuff. Uh, gotta show off the bling, got the gold paladin uh, quick shield there. Get the rest of the uh, G deck starting off. Start with the newer card. Brambent Dragon. Golden Dragon, Brambent Dragon. So what Brambent Dragon does is um, when it's on the Vanguard Circle, duh, uh, when it attacks, you ch choose two of your rear guards you put them on the bottom of your deck. You flip a G unit face up, and you draw two cards, and then you choose up to two cards from your hand and call them. And if you called two, uh, Brambent gets a crit. So you can just basically... Uh, suck up two rear guards, put on the bottom of your deck, and draw two cards, and then not call anything. And then you get your triple drive, and you got five cards for that turn, which is pretty nice. Um, but a lot of times I do like to call the two just to get off the crit as pressure, because a Vanguard with crit, when you're running eight crits, is going to be pressure, especially if your opponent's at two damage. So it's sometimes it's worth it, but also if you call out cards like Dindrain and um, Sagramore just to call more stuff, you can still kind of get resources off that as well so it doesn't hurt to call the two things anyways also calling agovale is a good target for you know multi-attacking and yeah i like brambin as a good card just because uh if you're playing against things like uh gridora which says you can't call things from other than hand you have brambit which lets you um you know do that i'd run two just because it flips anything so you go into one you flip something you can go into the second one flip something else um, but if you know you're playing in a match where you feel like you're not really going to use it, you can also flip it for cost. So next up, I run two copies of Golden Dragon Spear Cross Dragon. Uh, Spear Cross was from the first premium collection, I believe. Uh, its first skills act when it's in the G zone and you're in Unite. If your Vanguard's grade 3, you kind of lost 2, you discard a card, and you stride this from face down onto your Vanguard Circle. The second skill is act once return. You soul blast one, turn anything from your G zone face up, and uh, you look at the top five and you call two. Overall, just a really amazing card. Built, fills your board, 
lets you stride super early. Love this card. Just overall really good card. I was thinking about running a third copy, but I haven't found myself in a situation where I want to go into this more than twice. I'm usually by that point going into a, a killing, like a G unit that's going to kill for the turn, either Ultima or like um, Eltis Winner or, you know, something else that's going to like, you know, really push for the turn. Um, maybe in more playtesting, I'll see that maybe I'll want to run more of these for longer games, but for now, I'm just running it at two. Next up, I'm running two copies of Master Swordsman of First Light, Gurgit Helios. Helios' skill is Unite, Act once per turn. You um, flip a uh, copy of its self face up, and then for the turn, you get Drive plus one. So it's just literally Unite, flip itself, Quad Drive. Pretty vanilla. Um, quad Drive is still good. I feel like that can be a lot of pressure. So if you want to first stride, go into this just for the quad drive and get the hand, go for it. I still like that for that reason as well. The second skill is GB3. This unit gets 5k for each of your rear guards, and your opponent cannot guard a grade one or greater cards from their hand during the turn. So it has a little bit of a guard restrict. Um, I know a lot of people are using grade zero PGs, kind of like how we're using marks in this deck. So the grade one or greater doesn't really matter too much. But if you're playing against decks like Luard, which do use grade one PGs, and you're trying to go in and basically make it so they can't PG for the turn, Helios can be, excuse me, a game ender in that sense. And also getting the 5k for all those additional units you're calling for the turn. Helios is still a pretty decent card. I only run at the two just because you're going to use the skill once. Even if I do flip it face up for a cost, you can still use its GB3 just for the guard restrict and the power if you don't want to get the quad drive. So still pretty decent by itself as a one of so next up two copies of golden dragon glorious reigning dragon glorious reigning dragon skill is you kind of bless one you choose a face down copy of itself turn face up when it attacks um kind of blast you pick two rear guards and you put them on the bottom of your deck you look at top seven seven <laughs> Uh, and among the seven, you call cards equal to the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone. So if you have seven face-up, you can call all seven. If you only have two face-up, you can only call two of the seven. And then after continuing the skill, if you called three or more things, you counter-charge and soul-charge. So you get your counter-blast back, you gain a soul. This has been one of my favorite cards that has ever come out as a G-Unit for uh, Gold Paladin, so I'm glad that it's staying in the deck. I only run it at two because I'm going to use this skill once. It's more for kind of like a... Like, I know my deck is running low, and I'm just kind of doing this just so I can attack and feed more cards into my deck without having to lose cards, because you don't have to call the cards that you look at the top seven. So that's most of the times what I find myself using it for, but it's still good multi-attacking in general. So yeah, good uh, good circumstance card. All right, on to the one-ofs, starting with the uh, basically the card that's going to guarantee the win every single game, Xeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. Uh, Ultima's skill is when it's placed on the Vanguard Circle, you counter blast two. You search for four cards, uh, choose two, call them. The other two go back on the top of your deck after you sh uh, after you shuffle. So you put them on top, and then for the rest of the turn, uh, all the triggers that you check when you attack are applied to all of your units. So you stack two crits on top. Your opponent knows there's going to be two crits as well. You swing, triple drive. The first two obviously crits. Your whole board gets. 20k and 2 crit if you get a third trigger that's plus 30k to all your board and if you have a bunch of excel markers from percival you have like eight attacks going with plus 30 each plus 20 minimum they all have and then three to four crit on them and it's it's the game ender that's that's the whole goal and then obviously the following skill is when this is put back into your G-Zone, you remove all of the cards in your G-Zone from the game. So you have no G-Guardians, no more striding. So once you go into this, that's it. Like you basically are reliant on the skills of the of your main deck. Kind of wonky, it's doable, but you, you basically know that if you go into this, you are wanting to win that turn. Um, I was still kind of struggling with the room. And like I said, there's still like, a, like you can adjust with whatever you want. I do run the one copy of Agnos, um, Progenitor Dragon. Uh, Progenitor Dragon's skills are you have to discard a copy of a card that's on your Vanguard Circle, similar to Xeroth Dragons, so they both kind of have the same cost. Um, Xeroth Dragons are just if you have two or two or more face-up in your G-Zone. Two or more or three or more? It's uh, 
three or more. You have to have three or more face up in your G zone, and then you can stride into Ultima. Progenitors are just if you have the same name as your Vanguard. Um, so the skill of Agnos is when it's placed on ban, you can pay the cost. If you do, you counter blast, you soul blast, you call all the cards from your hand to the board. So your hand is empty. You call everything in your hand to the board, and then you draw three. So I feel like Dagnos is helpful if for whatever reason your opponent pushes you really early, you threw a lot of hand down, you only got like two cards in your hand, but one of them is your copy of your Ezel, you stride, go into Progenitor Dragon, call your hand, draw three cards, and then that way you can still kind of keep up. The cool part about Progenitor Dragons is that when they go back into the G-Zone, for the rest of the game, you do not have to pay the cost for stride, you just stride for free. Uh, the other skill is that it can't be flipped up for cost, so you can't just like flip it face up through Spear Crest or Spear X or Brandman. But when you do stride into it, you don't have to pay its cost. If you just need a vanilla stride, you go boop, not paying cost, swing, end turn, goes back in G-Zone for the rest of the game. I don't have to pay cost for normal stride. So that's really helpful as well. Uh, lastly, Celtus Winner. I do know I'm not running... Um, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the grade one. Uh, but the one that kind of does the loop, I would drop maybe one copy of Additional Angel just to have added in for the loop, um, just for fun. But I'll, in all the testing I've done, I feel like I never ever have enough deck to where the where Celtus Winner's loop really matters. So that's just from my personal experience. But I do run it just as a kill card if I feel like I am at GBA and I don't have, um the cost for ultimate stride, but I can stride. Might as well just go into the GB8 and attack them with a bunch of attacks and kind of win that way. So it's in there as a tech for the most part, but it can be pretty much any any other G unit, maybe like another Spear X or another Helios. Who knows? It can be whatever it is. Onto the G Guardians. Uh three copies of Slamy Flare. I love me my Slamy Flare. Slamy Flare's skill. Uh, this card's clutch, by the way. Definitely run at least three of this. Um, when it's placed on the Guardian Circle, you pick a rear guard from the bottom of your deck. You look at the top five, and you pick two cards from among them of different grades, and you call them to the guard circle. So you can use this to search out marks, so you can get a PG. So your opponent's like swinging at you, and it's like 80k, and you can't guard with Sentinels. You just you go into Slamy Flare, look at top five, call it a Halo Shield mark, and you call it a day. You know, makes it really easy. Also, because um, Triggers and Grade 1s got buffed with uh, V-Series, Grade 1s have 10k shield, Triggers have 15k shield, so now you're going to have like a 27, 37, uh, 52 shield total, like defense total, if you call a Trigger in a Grade 1. So it's pretty good overall, just the amount of shield this card gets, just from the buff of units getting more shield. So I love, I love Slamy Flare. Lastly, for G-Units, we're running two copies of True Liberator of Healing, Elise. Uh, I'm only running two just because getting to GB8 is the main reason that I'm running two. You GB1, you flip a G-Unit face or G-Guardian face up, so like a Slamy Flare. Um, Counter Blast 1, you look at top two cards of your deck, choose one, you call it. The other goes to the bottom. And then if the guard is successful, the called unit gets moved to uh, rear guard circle so it's helpful if you want to build a board or if you want to be able to like oh you know i want to call something and then maybe the next g guard put it back on the bottom of the deck for slamy's cost so it is helpful but it is mostly there to kind of feed into um ultima and also feed into gb8 so if you like g guard and then go into a lease and then you flip a g unit face up or G-Guardian face-up, you now have three face-up in the G-Zone. You can just first stride Ultima if you want to. Um, that is pretty much it for the deck profile. These are just uh, gifts. That's just the rest of what I got in my hand right now. So yeah, the deck is pretty aggressive. Um, and it is a lot of fun. It does tend to get a little bit, um, not stale, but I would say that... Um, it does tend to like feel like if you don't go into Blonde Ezel or if you don't see Bowman. Where's Bowman? Oh, I'm going backwards here. There he is. Like if you don't see Bowman and you don't really 
get the superior right off it does feel kind of like a vanilla deck but getting those excel markers with percival and then going into ultima for the kill definitely is what makes the deck tick so hope you guys like this deck profile i'm hoping to do some more premium content in the near future this deck is obviously also going to get updated once um, volume collection two one and two come out just some like some minor changes with just adding the grade three heals other than that I might make some other adjustments later, but I'll let you guys know. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.